Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing. It is Thursday, the 4th of July. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined uh, for the second uh, day in a row by Stevie Clifford. How's it going, Stevie? Yeah, good morning, mate. Good morning, everyone. Uh, fine, Derek, fine. It's uh, not a bad day today. You know, it'll probably be raining in about five minutes and then snowing in ten, so... The way the weather's been the last couple of days, but yeah, fine. I'm glad to be here, so hopefully there's some good stuff to discuss. Yeah, the weather's been a shocker, hasn't it? Have you get, have you get any sunshine up where in your neck of the woods, Stevie? Well, aye, I mean, it seems all right today, but mm. it seems all right today, so we'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, um, it's, it's contrasting. That's a good word for it, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, grey skies overhead here in uh, Warrington. Uh, the sun is trying to poke its head out, but uh, yeah, a bit dreek to say the least. Anyway, people aren't tuning in for uh, weather reports. They're tuning in to hear about all things Rangers. Before we get stuck into the news, folks, just a quick word for our podcast sponsors, MPH Boilers. Uh, if your boiler is on the blink and you need a new one, then these are the guys to call. They've got some wonderful Wiesman boilers on offer. The all-important link is in the description below. Right, where shall we start then? Um, well, let's start with uh, Abdallah Seema. We talked about him yesterday, Stevie. He posted on his Instagram yesterday with a, a sort of montage of his performances, a highlights reel of uh, last season, uh, with the caption uh, stating, one to never forget, and it was quickly followed up by a more to come soon message, which of course uh, set the, the rumour mill uh, into meltdown. Uh, of course, we discussed him yesterday. Uh, I think we're both in agreement. We'd like to see him return to Rangers. Uh, should we read too much into his message? Do you think? Oh yeah, let's let's read let's read too <laughs> much into it. Let's let's get excited. Let's um... no, it was um, it was funny, wasn't it? Because his wee montage that he done. Way he's done. Um, he, he certainly uh, done that. I've never seen my bandwagon. Ah, she was excited there. Um, <laughs> the wee montage that he done, he got no criticism, does he? So, um, that was that no. was quite interesting. There was just complete love for Abdallah Seema. So, um, yeah, I think that he's one that would be extremely popular. Seema's an interesting one because the way I was speaking about it last night, I, I think he's the type of signing that immediately could turn your transfer window from five or six being, you know, we're okay, we're content with the way it's going to, right, okay, same as here, so that's, it brings it up a notch or two. I think he's one that everybody would like. Yeah. And yeah. I wonder if that's the reason why interest in Kabadai kind of went from being him being over here and all that kind of stuff to nearly done and it getting reported to Rangers just never getting it over the line. I wonder if there's something in the interest of, of Seema becoming real again and, and that becoming a viable prospect. So I, I am obviously, I've got no in, no knowledge of that, Derek. I'm just surmising maybe, yeah. you know, because uh, he's, he's certainly one. He can, he can play in multiple positions. He can play across front three, can't he? He can also play as a nine. So there's a lot to Abdallah Seema that, that we can, uh, that we like. And yeah, I mean, I must admit, when I seen I seen his montage, and then you see, you know, more to come soon, and the wee arrow or the wee finger pointing up at the video as if to say, "There's more of this to come soon." I am, listen, I'm on board. I'm, I'm a huge Abdallah Sima fan. Let's get him in, and uh, let's let's read into it, Derek. Let's let's be jolly for once, you know, and yeah. enjoy it. So yeah, um, let let's hope that one's going to happen. Yep, uh, uh, and hopefully at Rangers, there have been in negotiations, of course, with uh, Brighton. Uh, they've made no secret. The fact that they're wanting to uh, sign them on a permanent basis, uh, it's up to Brighton, of course, and what the asking price will be for Abdallah Seema. Uh, he's a good lad. Uh, we spoke to him uh, during the last season, of course. Uh, he speaks very well. Uh, loved his time last season at Rangers, uh, and let's hope we see more of him in a Rangers jersey. Certainly one to keep uh, an eye on. Uh, a few comments coming in. Uh, yeah, Stevie, batter in. What I was going to say on that, Derek, was that we were at a sponsor's day um, because we, we managed, fortunately enough, to sponsor Ross McCausland last season. So we were up at a sponsor day and Abdallah Seema was there. And, you know, he, he did not hold back on his love for Rangers when, when talking to us. And maybe you would expect players to be like that, but this was different. 
he's, he's adamant that he wants to stay here, adamant that he wants to um, be at Rangers and things like that. So his family love it, he loves it. So that was interesting. You know, you, you try not to read too much into it because you wouldn't expect players to sit and go, no, I hate it and it's, it's time to go, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, mm-hmm. but he was very adamant and he was very well spoken that Rangers was the place that he wanted to be. So, you know, I'm clutching at any straws I can get when it comes to Abdallah Tima. So definitely, um, he definitely one that, you know, when you speak to him, at least he appears to really love it here and want to be here. So that's half the battle. Yeah, uh, and he certainly looks like he was enjoying his football last season. They had a, a bit of a, a rough spell after leaving uh, Slavia Prague, it was, wasn't it? He, he played for um, and, uh, yeah, went to Brighton, had a few... Uh, a couple of loan spells didn't quite work. Stoke and uh, Onge are over in France. And uh, yeah, you just need somewhere to, to call home. And in Ibrox, he certainly found it. So uh, yeah, let's hope uh, he can call it a permanent home soon. Uh, CGM55 gets in touch. Uh, this uh, caught my attention on the screen. Morning all. Not sure if I'll make it through this today. Might have forgotten the old wedding anniversary again. Uh, shame on you, buddy. But uh, good to have you tuning in. Uh, and, uh, yeah, congratulations, uh, uh, for that milestone. Right, uh, other news, of course, uh, you will have seen uh, yesterday, uh, you just touched on it there, Stevie, Yusuf Kabadai signing for uh, Augsburg over in Germany, a four-year deal from Bayern Munich, uh, just under a million euros. There is add-ons uh, as well, so that uh, is a move that won't be materialising. Uh, and Chris had a transfer piece out yesterday. For those of you that didn't join us on the, the evening briefing, the transfer update, on the Rangers Review Extra channel. Uh, he filled us in on Serial Dessers. Uh, P.O.K. Palk Salonica are obviously keen on Serial, uh, and there are a host of other clubs uh, keeping tabs on him as well. Clubs in France and Spain, and also uh, clubs in Saudi Arabia as well. Doesn't look like he's going to be short of offers, Stevie. He's someone that, that certainly moves around. He has not spent much time at many clubs down the years. And uh, he's certainly someone I can see moving on. If Rangers can recoup, what, the four and a half million quid they spent on him, uh, they paid Cremonese for him. I think they've uh, won a watch, have they not? You know, um, it's interesting because I, I remember speaking about Serial Dessers back in December, in November time. and then. Danilo got injured. I think if Danilo hadn't got injured, Rangers would have cashed in on January and and Cyril Desser. Yeah. So there was certainly plenty of interest. He's he's a player that, that seems to get plenty of interest. He's he's certainly racking up the signing on fees, old Cyril, isn't he? So <laughs> yeah. loves a move. Um I'm not sure how true the stuff is about um about him asking for a transfer. I found that a bit perplexing. I wasn't sure at all whether or not there's truth to that and no. Whether or not he, he would be, he's asked for a move. So, you know, unless he's been told that he's not first choice and his, his game time will be limited, that's maybe why he would move. But he seemed another on the whole that, that you know, thoroughly enjoyed it here. And yeah, he's had challenges and especially with the fans. And But I wouldn't think that would have been enough for him to, to possibly move on, Derek. So that's, that's an interesting story. What I did find interesting as well is that he's certainly pictured in all the first team training pictures that went out yesterday, you know, of all the running and all the first team and everything else and, and all the work that was going on there. So there was a point where we thought maybe he was going to be out for two, three months, wasn't there? That was a report after the cup final injury. So that doesn't seem to be true or or whatever the injury was, he certainly seems to be over it. So, yeah, I think there's going to be, you know, there's going to be interest. And we talked about, um, you know, Abdallah Seema's YouTube video highlight reel, you know, and, and Serial Dessers could easily boast one that he can put together. You yep. know, there would be an extra couple of minutes for all the chances he didn't do, you know what I mean? But I we know the What's that? I don't think I don't think he'll add them to his highlight reel. Uh yeah. just a suspicion. If he had the same um person that made the other highlight reels which included <laughs> you know stuff in it that shouldn't have been in there then you never for know. But, for example. Yeah. Um I <laughs> You know, the big guy, like the big guy is what he is. Like, you know, he's a very, very likable big guy and, and he's he's got his faults and stuff like that. But it's difficult it's difficult not to say that you know, arguably he's he's contributed, he's done what he was supposed to do, 22, 23 goals, you know, throughout the season. He's he's done what he's supposed to do. And if others had pitched in, then 
you know, we might not have been in the position and and I, I do think it's right, Derek. If you if you got an offer of four and a half million, you know, you would cash in on it. But there's not each, yeah. yeah, there's not too many though that you wouldn't and that's I think, you know, overall with the squad, I think that you know, there's obviously big big stories about Cantwell and, and stuff like that. And the, and the truth is, I don't think there's too many that aren't for sale or aren't available in that first team squad. So we've spoken about the, the need to get players out and the need for that to start moving. Well, you know, I think with that being said, there's not too many that aren't, you know, wouldn't be available if they were approached. So Cyril Dessers, I think, comes into that. Yep, uh, he's yeah, like uh, Abdallah. He's a, he's a likable big fella. Uh, again, we spoke to him last season. Uh, great guy. Uh, you would uh, happily go for a pint with him, but uh, just up front, uh, you just can't hang your hat on him. Despite scoring, like you say, Steve, he scored about twenty-two goals last season. Uh, for me, Rangers still need better. And if they're going to bring in uh, upwards of four and a half million pounds for him, then I think that would be a, a good move all round. Uh, another player I wanted to discuss, and, and we touched on him yesterday. Uh, I think, uh, Todd Cantwell, uh, I think Rangers uh, wouldn't be opposed to offers coming in for him. Uh, a bit of a gaff yesterday from uh, Jose Enrique, his agent, uh, former Liverpool player, uh, sending a DM. He thought he was sending to the, the Lecce boss over in Italy. Sent it to, a, was it a journalist or, or a fan site? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. But two players he was recommending to the Lecce boss and uh, Todd Cantwell was one of those uh, should we? What should we read into that, Stevie? Um, would you be surprised to see him being part of Philip Clement's squad uh, as we kick off the, the new campaign? Well, I've already been, I think, fairly vocal on, on Todd Cantwell and had this discussion a lot of time about, you know, the stats and availability, um, you know, of our number 10s being more durable, you know, and we spoke about, being able to do it in the very big games. We've chucked Janis Hadji into that conversation. And and um, what I did learn is that our stats are, are very similar. Um, Todd Cantwell's perhaps even a wee bit greater with, with the games that he's played. But mm. I'm just, Derek, look, I've, I've been pretty vocal on this, that you look at the very successful season we had, you know, the, the one blueprint in the last, you know, dozen years or whatever and our number 10 in that position was a huge goal scorer and a huge assist maker in Yanis Hadji and then Scott Arfield when he played he pitched in with numbers and things like that and I don't think that Todd Cantwell has got anywhere near those numbers there's obviously an issue between him and Clement that's you know I think you know when you look at wee things that have happened between us the early substitution um, even the reaction at the cup final where he's pushing Todd away and stuff like that. I'm not saying that there's a massive issue there, but it feels like it's difficult not to think or overthink that situation a wee bit. I think you'd be hard work for a manager, Stevie. I think you on and off the pitch, it looks like someone, I mean, I like Todd, but it looks like someone that uh, the manager is going to have to keep an eye on. Well, the thing I is, these, ru- these rumours have followed Todd Cantwell everywhere, aren't they? So they're not yeah. really helpful. There was question marks over his attitude and things like that when he first came up to Norwich. But, you know, I really want it to work for Todd Cantwell. He's a player that I do like. I, and, you know, and I think that he can contribute. Is it, the position is, that I'm in is, does he, can he contribute enough for it to really be enough? Has he really done it in the biggest games? Has he really done it in the old firm games? And that and the answer is no. Mm. So he, he falls into the same bracket, I think, as the Serial Dessers, whereas, you know, the, if the money's right and if teams are in for him, then you're you're going to let him go. So it's just difficult. Would he flourish with better players around him? Yeah. But do we have the capability of getting better players in without letting a few of our first team players go? The answer is probably not. Yeah. So it's a difficult one. You know, Tom Lawrence is more likely to survive if, than Todd Cantwell because Tom Lawrence, maybe it's difficult to move him on with the contract he's on, for example. So, if you're needing to move on one number 10 and keep one, Todd Cantwell is probably one that you're getting more interest in. So, mm-hmm. and I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking out loud with, with that one. That's not, not based on anything again. So it's, it's a difficult one. Do, do I expect him to be part of the first team squad? Probably not, Derek. Probably not. And that's, you know, but you would say that on half a dozen other first team players either. So 
certainly going to be an interesting few weeks. I would not be surprised if there's some big interest. As for Jose Enrique <laughs> offering them out and stuff like that, um, <laughs> you know, there could have been a few accounts on, on X it, that it, went, it went wrong. So, yeah, eight, eight and a half million quid. Uh, he's uh, rated that on the transfer market. I've seen it in his message. If Rangers, if Rangers are getting that, Stevie, then uh, yeah, we're all doing cat wheels, I think. Um, but no, I'd uh, take a third of that to be honest. So you know, I'd take two, three million most, never mind eight and a half. But yeah, give me a big transfer like that, and you'll you'll grab it. But yeah. um I'm not I'm not overly concerned about making too much money. To, you know, I think Norwich have got a big slice of that to come as well. So long, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's somebody that's on a, a big amount of money and stuff like that as well. So, you know, eight and a half million would be lovely, Derek, that's for sure. Yeah. Just, just speaking about selling, something that just popped in my head. Uh, you'll have seen the news, folks. Uh, Glenn Kamara looks like he's uh, edging towards another move. Uh, Ren over in France are uh, keen on bringing him in. I'm not too sure how far uh, along that deal is, but it's certainly been reported by some uh, reputable sources. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. No Rangers had a, a promotion sell on if uh, Leeds were to uh, make it into the Premier League. Uh, I think it was something like 10%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, half a million quid Rangers were in line to uh, get. I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, I'd imagine there will be a sell on for, for Glenn Kamara, Stevie. Uh, so that's certainly wanted to keep an eye on if he is to, to move again. Yeah, potentially there could be, it could be you know, depending on profit of, of any sale and stuff like that. So... Yeah. It's an interesting one. We'll just need to, um, I think, clarity over that one. I was, um, I had to go and get clarity over how much it would have been if they were promoted. But um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not 100%. Something tells me that 10% sounds about right. Um, but I can't remember what Rangers said about it at the time when they sold them. So... Yeah, you know, we, I, yeah, we're trying to chase. Yeah, we're trying to do a bit of digging uh, on on what exactly mm. it, it is. If there is a, a sell on, you'd imagine there will be. Usually in, in deals these days, there is a, a, a percentage uh, factored into uh, future sales. So uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of it. So uh, if friend want to bid twenty five million quid, then uh, batter on in lads. Yeah, we think they've just sold uh, Boy Archie Gray, haven't they? For for big money, is that right? Forty million, yeah. Aye, so and I know they're bringing in, I think, Rodden from Tottenham for ten million. And if Glenn Kamara goes out, I know that Leeds, they've obviously got their challenges financially. They've got to recoup quite yeah. a bit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if if Glenn Kamara does go out. It's it's probably a move that Glenn Kamara made with with um, designs of playing. For, you know, Premiership football. Yep. So if that doesn't happen, I think he will be open to yet another move. So it's an interesting one. Anything that can make Rangers a wee couple of pennies, you would be quite interested in. So as I said, um, as you said, it's it's one that we need to clarify and, yeah. and completely bottom out for for um, for sure. So mm -hmm. another one to keep an eye on, I think. Yep, yeah, uh, Jock gets in touch. He says, Ren is my local team. Not heard anything concrete about it there. You can be our, our, our ears on the ground over there, Jock. Uh, do keep us updated with the latest with regards to uh, Glenn. Uh, there's an interesting point, incidentally, coming in just off the back of it. The Catmull, I thought, was a, a top-notch point from William. He says, uh, when do you ever talk about what Catmull does on the park? Never always seem to talk about is what he does off the park. Certainly last season, uh, I think he, he flattered to deceive uh, somewhat. We did certainly need more uh, from Todd last season. And, uh, yep, yeah, uh, good point there from William. Uh, and uh, a few transfer points. Well, first of all, uh, I'll address this. Mark gets in touch. He says, Derek, if you're a subscriber to the website, do you get the YouTube free or is that extra cheers? This is uh, the Rangers Review Extra uh, channel. Unfortunately, there's no way we can uh, amalgamate the two. We have uh, tried to do so, uh, buddy, uh, but they are separate this moment in time. Uh, so it's uh, two ninety nine a month on uh, YouTube. You get three to five extra videos uh, a week. But uh, uh, until we can amalgamate the two, then they are separate um, at this moment in time. So uh, hopefully that addresses that. Uh, another player, obviously, that we're, we're, we're hoping to uh, see paraded with the scarf above his head soon. Uh, Prod uh, gets in touch. Uh, Hamza announcement today, surely. Uh, we are expecting it at some point. In the near future, Hamza Igeman to be paraded as a Rangers player. We spoke about him at length yesterday. Uh, he's certainly someone that we're looking forward to seeing. Uh, and let's hope we see a few knee slides uh, in this coming season. We certainly have missed that for sure. Uh, this point I wanted to raise from uh, Maka. He says, uh, morning, guys. Uh, I read of our interest in Miofsky, but because of relations between the clubs, 
and the uh, Conor Barron Tribunal. It's unlikely the deal would happen should we test their resolve. Uh, he's a player I think many Ranger supporters would like to see uh, at Ibrox, Stevie Bojan Miofsky. However, uh, Aberdeen, uh, we know uh, that they're, well, they are looking for more money for Conor Barron. Uh, I think a bit of posturing towards uh, their fan base. And uh, I think if Rangers want Bojan Miofsky, they are going to pay, have to pay over the odds for him, given that the team that he plays for is uh, he, one. I don't think he'll be short of offers, uh, Bojan Miofsky. Uh, would you like to see him at Ibrox? I don't think we have £6 million to pay that Aberdeen would be looking for bluntly. So I don't think there's any any legs in that. I think, you know, yeah. we have to be extremely cute about what we do this summer. We don't have a lot of money to throw around. You know, that six million probably, you know, pays for everybody that's come in so far, including the potential Cortez fee. Egaman, you know, so there's there's a need to be kind of a bit careful about what we do. And I just don't think that Bojan Majowski to pay that much money, Derek. You know, see in an ideal world if we had a good squad and it was settled and you had a solid 2022 20, players that we could possibly hang your hat on, then you could go and spend money. Or you could go and spend your budget on him. But I just don't see it. I don't see mm. it being happening. So should we test their resolve? The answer is probably not. You know, we're not going to get him for three or four million. And Aberdeen would want six. So and they would probably dig their heels in quite a bit, especially, you know, I don't think the fan base would take too kindly, don't they? So, um, although they're nothing to us, Rangers to Aberdeen are a big thing, so I don't think they would take too kindly for that, but I just don't, I don't see it, Derek. I think it's one that's a complete non-starter. I would be very surprised yeah. if that happened. Um, so, I just think he's one that, that won't materialise. What's your, what's your making on the, the Baron, which looks like it's going to go to a tribunal, uh, Alan Burrows, a couple of weeks ago uh, when the, the new manager was paraded saying that the that, uh, Rangers' offer, I believe to be around half a million pounds because they are due a development fee, uh, is uh, nowhere near enough, which I found quite surprising. I thought that was a, a pretty decent offer for him, given that he's a, a free agent, um, but they're looking for more cash, Stevie. Uh, what do you make of all this? Uh, carry on. Oh, just look, just what I said, didn't it? You know, we teams are when they lose their players, bigger clubs are gonna are gonna feel like that, aren't they? And they're gonna have to posture to their fan base, especially one that's got a, a you know a bigger sense of um, expectations than it really should have. You know, I think the, the last time Aberdeen were successful, you know, people sat for oil paintings. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's not one that, that, that overly concerns me too much. I think the tribunal mm-hmm. will be settled on, you know, weekly wages and, you know, how much he was properly worth and how yeah. much he probably would have got. And they'll probably settle around about half a million, 600,000 or something like that. So I'm not overly bothered. Aberdeen have got to posture to the fan base, what you said. So mm-hmm. I'm not bothered in the slightest. I would rather we didn't deal with them. But, you know, we, we, have, um, we have had a number of decent players for them over the years and, as I said, the you young boy that looks pretty good, he signed a new contract, so we'll go and pick him up in a in a couple of years as well. So, you know, um, it doesn't really bother me. You know, Aberdeen are a bit of a non-entity to me, Derek, and I don't think we should talk them up any other way. So they do what they need to do, and, and we'll do what we do, and I, I don't see us paying much more than that for Conor Barron, in all honesty. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Conor in action for Rangers. You spoke to him last week, Stevie. He spoke very well, didn't he? Yeah, he's a good lad. Uh, yeah, he spoke really well and um, really keen and, and eager to get going. And and um, I think it was a, a bit of a different interview for me because I didn't ask him about Aberdeen or, or anything like that. And you can certainly go and check that out. It's well worth a watch, three or four minutes with the boy. Yeah. Talked about what kind of player he was. I was interested in that, you know, technical geeky stuff, Derek. You know, asked him what he would prefer, 6, 8 and 10. You know, mm-hmm. positions, what is he? Because we've talked a lot about that as well. And I wanted to see his viewpoint. And he, he doesn't want to be pigeonholed into one position. He says he can play them all. Wants to add that attack inside to his game. Spoke about, you know, the excitement once it was was uh, Rangers. You know, that was in his heart. And it's the only place he wanted to really come. So, yeah, a really likeable, really likeable lad, Derek. And you know what I like best about him as well is he's another that I can look in the eye during an interview and <laughs> stuff like that. So... Definitely already a little little favourite of mine, Conor Barron. So, 
Um, nice lad. Seems seems motivated, Derek. Mm. I think to be here and, and seems enthusiastic about it. So I'm um, excited about that one. He was one that I wanted in. So yeah, he might surprise a few people. Um, you know, and he he, he might have a, another Scottish midfielder in next him. So we'll just need to wait and see how that one develops. Yep, uh, I've got to say, uh, he's certainly someone that, that I wanted Rangers to go and get. Uh, I sort of wrote it off when I seen some of the clubs that were interested in him, uh, some big clubs in Italy, uh, to uh, no less, and I thought he would take the, the Lewis Ferguson route, so I think it's a bit of a coup for Rangers to, to bring him in. Uh, and yeah, like you, Steve, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, this coming season. Uh, let's get to a few more comments before we wrap up for the day. First of all, uh, Andrew gets a yellow card for this. He says, hello from a scorching Crete. Uh, sorry to make uh, people jealous. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's a yellow for you, Andrew, but uh, good to have you tuning in anyway. Uh, James, with the point here, uh, and I've seen a lot of uh, frustration on social media with regards to outgoings. Uh, James, with the point, do you think we have to sell before we can buy any players? Uh, it has gone a bit quiet. I know Hamza uh, is on his way, but uh, in terms of outgoings, apart from the out of contract players, Stevie, we haven't seen any of uh, sort of big hitters, if you like, leave the club as yet. Do fans have a, a, a right to feel a bit tad worried with uh, each passing day that these players are still at the club? Yeah, well, I'm a bit fed up myself. You know what I mean? I, I would want everything done yesterday. But it's it's not like, it's not as easy as just saying, you know, out, out you go and then the next day they're away to somebody else. So I'm with James a wee bit. We are possibly we have to, you know, it's a bit like when you buy a house, maybe there's somebody else waiting to sell there right. or, or buy new yours, theirs. And, yeah. and there's a chain of events that need to happen. You know, maybe it's like that for, for maybe there is interest in our players, but they need to move on their players first. And the window is a bit slow at the moment. I don't think too many teams are doing much, especially during the Euros. So maybe it's just a case of it'll heat up in the next couple of weeks. I certainly hope so. I think that's the... The answer, um, I would have hoped that we would have had more players in before we went to Holland at the start of next week. That looks unlikely. Mm. Hamza surely is announced at some point. You know, I'm on the verge of getting announced quicker than he is. So um, <laughs> hopefully that will happen soon. Yeah. And um, then we can maybe go from there. But he's a he's a quite a, a solid investment, a couple of million pounds on that lad. So, yeah. I think you know. In order, I think there's plenty of interest in like so Sam Lammers. I think there's interest, obviously, Cyril Dessers that we've talked about. There's going to be agents trying to move on others. So, I think it's it's all there, Derek, without it actually biting yet. You know, and we look at Sam Lammers as having such a great six months in Holland, and you would think that teams in Holland would be desperate to go and get him. But even there, two or three that are looking for him are are hanging back. So, yeah, you know, Saudi window I think properly opens in the seventeenth. So. If rumours are true, maybe we're going to see movement there. So just need to wait and see. There's a lot of a lot of different, yeah, you know, and about it, isn't there? So we we do have all of July, and we do have all of August, and sometimes outgoing things can can take a bit longer, you know. So yeah, De different. I, I'll be a bit frustrated, Derek, as well. It would be it would be wrong to say otherwise. You know, you want everything done, don't you? Yesterday, but we will just need to hope that that's this problem. Happens. Yeah. It's uh, sometimes these things uh, take time. Uh, I wanted to touch on this. Another player that was linked, uh, adding to the, the host of players that have all been, already been linked to the club, Jonathan Hughes gets in touch. Any chat on uh, Usama uh, Targalin? Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he play, he's a, another Moroccan. Uh, he plays for Le Havre uh, over in France. They have offered him a new deal, uh, but it's claimed over uh, reports in France that Rangers are keen on him. I think there's one or two other clubs uh, that are keen on him as well. Can't say I know too much about him, Stevie. 22-year-old uh, midfielder, I think he is. Any good in football manager? Can't say if he recognises his name at all from mm. anything. So I saw the interest yesterday. Could it be a case of Rangers just their name being used in amongst that? We've seen it yeah. with it the big centre half that you did the big interview for and then, you know, <laughs> three minutes later you'd sign for somebody else. So Yeah, that was a waste of time. We just, need to, <laughs> we just need to wait and see. Don't we? Like, you just never know. Rangers are in the hunt for players, right? And and he fits the profile. He fits the position. 
And I don't think that's entirely unfair to maybe chuck our name in as, as somebody that we might have been on a list somewhere that we're showing an interest in. Who knows how solid it actually is. It's a it's another interesting sort of name and profile. If he didn't come, come I wouldn't be overly bothered, Derek. It's another name where you're exactly. having to announce and things like that. You know, what we end up going to nickname him. You know, I mean, we've already got a few gyms that we've already nicknamed, so we can't we can't have another one, and that would be quite a difficult name. But I don't know anything about the boy, honestly. Yeah, I don't know anything yeah. about our interest in him either. So it would be a just uh, it's like most things, you know. We need to wait and see how concrete yeah. it turns out to be, and, and there is a lot of players, as I said, getting linked just because we are in the hunt for so many. So it's yeah. it's it's another one where you know maybe there's interest, and we just need to wait and see. Yeah, who knows if something uh, if something concrete does happen, folks will get the Moroccan lads on again to give us a, another presentation. They were uh, they were fantastic, really, yeah. really good. It's probably the best one I've watched that, that Rangers Review have done in terms of you know what they how they presented it and they made you really buy into the whole you know Hads, Hamza Egaman thing and it made yeah. you excited for it. So yeah, if there does turn out to be interest, get those boys back on because they were well worth it. Yep, uh, and it was good for me. I had hardly had to do any work as well. They uh, done it all for me, so uh, more of that, please. Uh, we'll wrap up with this with a, a, a suggestion of uh, who Rangers should be looking at, Stevie. Uh, this may surprise you, Paul, but I don't know if it's uh, too early to start drinking, but uh, Paul says, I would take Pepe as a free quality defender. Uh, 41 he is now. He get absolutely uh, roasted. Uh, Portugal's match in, in the Euros. Uh, I was watching the game against uh, Slovenia. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, listen, uh, people might hark back to uh, Bruno Alves uh, when he came. I think he was at, what, a similar age, 38, something like that, but when, or 37 when, when Bruno Alves uh, arrived uh, at Rangers. Uh, I think Pepe surely will be calling time on his career after uh, this tournament, Stevie. But yeah, still going strong. I don't know if he would be as much as a mysterious absence in his time at Rangers as Bruno Alves. So mm-hmm. Pepe would be funny. He's, he would be, he would smash, certainly smash a few of them, wouldn't he? In the yeah. old uh, Scottish League, but a, a tremendous defender. It's funny, we're talking about Alfredo roasting him and and he did, you know, he gave him some performance and that was some battle to watch, mm-hmm. you know, and then Pepe, I think, was in the, the, the Porto team. I think that even Alex McLeish beat a way back, I would need to yeah. double check that. I'm pretty sure well, he that was, by the way, in that as well. So, yeah, um, that just shows you the longevity of that guy. Just a top, top professional. What a defender yeah. as well. It's some amount of, uh, you know, little outtakes and everything else from his time at, at Real and stuff like that. So, top, top player. Um, I don't think it's really realistic that we would be, you know, entertaining him. Um, Enciala and Pepe at the back would be. Yeah, Quite the difference, wouldn't it? Like, at least the average age would be okay, thanks to Enciala. But um, yeah, it would be interesting. But no, I can't see that happening somehow. Yeah, uh, thanks anyway for your suggestion, uh, Paul. Certainly uh, got us talking, but uh, we'll wrap up there. Big thanks to Stevie as ever for joining us, and thank you to you all uh, for tuning in. Thanks to Ali the dog uh, as well for our uh, cameo on That's the show. Because I'm, it's because the kids are off there, so they're downstairs, aren't they? So um, my other study room is a, a total riot at the moment and can't record in there. So yeah, I'm kind of just sitting. I'm sitting on the bed um, upstairs, and, and she obviously is jump up and, and join me for the day. So yeah, more often, uh, my dog. Ah, is, yeah, 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 absolutely. So uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, more dogs on the show. That's uh, that's a uh, campaign for that. Right, that will do us there. Uh, we'll uh, speak to you. There's incidentally, um, we we'll talked about the Moroccan boy boys, but uh, they have uh, written a piece for us as well on Hamza. So that will be on the website uh, later on today. So something to uh, look forward to, folks. I'll be back on tomorrow with Chris. We hope you can join us for that. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now. <laughs>